So this video exists because I thought I was being smart. In my last video on the Bandolabs P2S, the whole idea of the video was to unbox it, set it up, and compare it to the Bamboo Labs X1C. Simple, clean, and informative, and then chaos. Because while setting it up, I discovered something that generally shocked me. The filament buffer from the X1C does not fit the back of the P2S. And yes, I stared at it for a minute like, maybe if I just believe hard enough. <laughs> Welcome to Maker Build It. I am Brian DeLuca, and today we are adding a filament buffer to the Bamboo Labs P2S. Now, if you watched my last video on setting up the Bamboo Labs P2S, you know that the filament buffer from the uh, X1C did not fit, even though both of those printers are compatible with the original AMS from Bamboo Labs. So this is why it caught me off guard. I ordered the P2S without the uh, filament buffer. It's the, the model number on it is the SA011. I already had an AMS. I already had an extra filament buffer. Actually, I have two of them in here. And also the P2S was supposed to be compatible with the original Bamboo Labs AMS. So logically, my brain said, Cool, I could use already what I have. Smart move, not a smart move. Turns out Bamboo Lab updated the filament buffer and the old one is not able to mount or be used on the P2S. Same job, same concept, different shape. Which means a couple of good filament buffers have now become shop decor. In reality, it is by fault. I don't recall seeing it at the time, but the listing for the P2S does say if you buy it, not as a combo, you will need the uh, filament buffer, that is the SA001, for your P2S. Now here's the painful part. New filament buffer out of stock for three to four weeks. So my P2S was sitting there fully capable, fully ready, but stuck in single color mode like it was being punished for something it didn't do. Eventually it did come back in stock and I ordered it right away, but as of time of uh, filming, it is out of stock again. And while I was ordering, there was one mystery left. According to the um, P2S listing, you also needed the six pin cable, which is the CAB035. Now, I do have a six pin cable from my previous AMS, but if the filament buffer changed, I couldn't guarantee that the pins on this six pin cable didn't change as well. I decided to order one just in case because I wasn't paying shipping for that cable that weighs less than the emotional damage of not having it. So the goal of this video, even though that front end was a little long winded, is really simple. I'm gonna show you exactly how to install this filament buffer on your P2S, whether it's the first time you're installing it or you need to replace it. And I'll also show you how to add the AMS properly so everything works. Basically, if you skip the buffer while ordering, you're upgrading your Bamboo Labs printer or you're holding the wrong filament buffer in your hand wondering what you did wrong, this video is for you. Now let's get it installed. Okay, so this should be a relatively easy install. We're just gonna pop off this rubber piece. There should be a connector under there, which is gonna connect directly to the back of the filament buffer. So let's just hope this connector, ah, uh, there we go. So the connector is actually right here. That was actually pretty smart. I don't wanna lose this, but how this was in the plastic already. So let's just connect this real quick. Let's go that way. Yeah. There we go. I don't want it to go back inside the printer. That was my biggest concern. Okay, this is connected. We're just gonna put the two screws on. So now we're just going to slide it into this little groove right there and put our screws in. So now that you see how simple that was to install, let's move it over to where it goes and get our AMS connected. So this was the wire we previously had coming from our other AMS. Um, it's 
Let me just pull it off. So you can see it is the same sort of six pin connector. So we're just gonna leave it on there. And we're gonna plug it in. Actually, before we do that, let's let's re rearrange the PTFE tubes. So I'm assuming this is gonna go in the first one. Let's just put that there. Now we need another tube here that's much longer to feed into the printer. We're just gonna pull this little, um, it's like a little lock out. I'm gonna take this one off. I'm just gonna leave that one on there. I'm gonna connect this one. Put our little lock back in place. And this one should go right in there. There we go. This tube's probably a little too long. I'll probably make put a much shorter one on here. So I used to have this up on the top shelf for my X1 carbon. So I'm leaving this just in case I need it. So now that all the tubes are in, let's connect the six pin connector and see if it works. This, like I said, this is the original cable. I bought another one. Let's see if the six pin connector works. Let's turn around and see what happens. And as you can see, now we have our AMS hooked up and it is already recognizing the colors in there, which is interesting because those were from the other printer and I never assigned these colors. And they are definitely not RFID tagged. I mean, this one is from Anycubic and this is a deep leaf filament. All right, let's get a couple of more filament colors in there and let's get something printed with the AMS. And of course I loaded in my little gelatinous cube maker guy that I designed for this first four color print. Now, when I sliced them, I get to see my colors weren't updating in my AMS, which I thought was a little odd. So I sent it over to my printer and lo and behold, I got a message explaining that the firmware is different. So the printer and the AMS had two different versions, which was actually really cool to see. This is actually some really advanced stuff I really wasn't expecting from the AMS interacting with the printer. Really impressed with how Bamboo Lab is handling this. So after I did my updates, and right then and there, the colors updated in Bamboo Lab Studio when I hit refresh. We were able to use the six pin connector we already had. We were able to use the original AMS that we already had, but we did have to buy the new filament buffer. So we finally got four colors now and our first print came out really nice. I couldn't be more happy with my little gelatinous cube maker. So what's the takeaway? Even when printers are compatible, accessories evolve. So sometimes the only thing standing between you and multicolor printing is a piece of plastic, a cable, or inventory limbo. But once it's installed, it's totally worth it. If this saved you some shipping costs or a mild existential crisis, make sure to hit the like button. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure to like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making. Oh, and remember, measure twice, order once, upgrade anyway.